Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with, thank God, the last Paranormal Activity movie review. <sighs> I don't even know who directed this, I don't even care about these movies at all. I'll just go ahead and say it, this is a 0 out of 4, another terrible Paranormal Activity movie. I think the third one is the only one I gave a little bit of credit to by giving it one star, just for at least feeling somewhat different for the fact that it was the yet number three, but really it's still not a good movie either. And then you get to this one, then it's just the same shit again. The only difference here is they do the, uh, they do like, a, they try to add a gimmick here. Because these movies really appeal to like lowest common denominator, they're just real cheap and thrown out there just to kind of get a, get a cash in on the core audience for the movies and get a quick buck. And they just add like little tiny sprinkle of things to them to kind of make them fairly different to have a slightly little bit more to the gimmick for the next movie. And this one they kind of go for like the 3D thing. To where there's shots in this movie towards the end that are deliberately in 3D. They look pretty hokey. I will say this. This one they put more money into. So you do actually see the demon creature in here. But for the most part it's just like a big smog looking thing. It kind of looks like Venom or something from the Venom movie. Um, once again it's the same terrible writing. You got a family of people who are stupid white people who are living in a house. Who constantly know that this thing is like haunting their daughter's room and they never leave the house or even try to. They bring a priest over who is absolutely useless. He doesn't have to tell the family to like go to a church or take their family to a holy place where the evil wouldn't be able to enter. So it wouldn't be able to bother them or anything like that. And the family never decides to leave until like the main last second of the movie. And then they do. And then they don't pay any attention to the daughter. And she magically gets teleported back to the house. And then they have to come back, and then they're right back in the situation. The demon shows up. You get a terrible CGI here, digital effect, where all these, like, this ghost thing is, like, coming out of the ground and they, uh, a floor, and they throw a sheet over it, and it's like the ghost is, like, walking around, or the demon or whatever is, like, walking around with a sheet over it. It looks really silly for anybody above the age of 12. That lets me know right here what this, the, and pretty much the end of it is the mom gets killed, like everybody dies, just like every other movie. The demon's there, you don't see its face, it picks up the little girl, and they just like walk off, or whatever. It's ate another soul, or whatever the hell this thing's doing. And then this is zero, I, that's the end, done. The only thing I'll say about this one is because they're, they are putting in more special effects shots, once again, it's just like other, other sequels to this, are like from part three and on, they're they're taking by putting in more special effect shots. They're taking you out of that realm of anything of this ever trying to pretend to be based on a true story that you ever bought into that. But at this point, if you're still believing that if you grew, if you watch these films, you are insane or easily fooled. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, what I was trying to say is because this one has a little bit more special effect shot towards the end, or at least for the climax, at least something's happening more like a traditional movie, that it is slightly more entertaining just on a base level, even if it is still terrible written. Um, but yeah, it's just bad. There's this hot blonde chick in the movie who like shows up for no reason, and she's just in the movie for no reason. And then there's this like brother-in-law or whatever or something like that with a mustache. He shows up, starts doing like comedy routines and all that. And once again, the family just sees constant crazy shit through the whole movie. And their daughter's like haunted and the dad knows she's haunted and so does the mom. And they never try to help the daughter. Never take the daughter out of the room to let her sleep in the bed with them to keep an eye on her. Like these movies are so unrealistic. No parent acts this way. And I know they're probably thinking, well, most of the people watching this is going to be like young, dumb, like preteens or whatever who don't really know anything about real parents and stuff like that, how actual loving parents would be. They would never let their daughter, like, sleep alone in a room after all the crazy shit they've seen in this movie. It just wouldn't happen. Um, so, it's just stupid. And at the same time, I could give it some leeway if the film itself was entertaining. See, that's the thing. You don't have to be, like, really inventive with a horror movie. You can just be entertaining. The same thing with, like, an action movie or any type of popcorn movie, whatever. And that's the thing about the Friday the 13th movies. Most of them are just fun. Uh, these movies are not fun. These movies are boring as shit. And none of them, uh, like, what it is is they hope that the, the atmosphere will be good enough to, like, get you through it. And maybe with the first one it could be for some people. But by the time you get up to part five, you're having to throw in, like, 3D gimmicks and really terrible CGI and all that. It's, or part six, I mean, not counting, like, the, the spinoff, the marked ones or whatever. And it's the fact that each film repeats the exact same thing for every single movie with half the film is like extremely boring and you might see like a table move or something and it just gets to the end. Like literally, these are all the same movie. The only difference is this one has a little bit more special effects budget. That's it. Uh, <laughs> and part three is still the same, but it was at least slightly better directed for what it was. But yeah, this is still a terrible film. I would rather be raped in the ass by Freddy Krueger's glove than to sit through this franchise again. 
Now, I keep hearing rumors that they might be making a seventh one, that they're thinking about it. God, I hope not. These are terrible movies. The only people I can see liking these are, like, real little kids who may have grew up on them in the 2000s or something. And to them, this is, like, the most intense horror ever or something. I, I don't know. They probably grew up with it or something. And then they, most of them probably got older, and then they look back at it and be like, well, this is stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, this is, a, this is the worst horror franchise I've ever seen. Even bad ones are at least entertaining. There's nothing to this series. Jason Blum is a huge con man when it comes to these, the, his franchises. Other stupid crap he did. I think he also did Truth or Dare. It's awful. <laughs> the dude is a, a really a con like artist when it comes to like these franchises and stuff. And I can't blame the guy. He makes shitty movies for low budgets because he knows there's an audience for them. They'll just keep watching them. I would do it. At the same time, as far as entertainment quality goes, they're awful. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again.